Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talk. So here we have the NASA propaganda machine. They've been winding up this old wheeze bag of a propaganda machine again in the media the last few days because they're launching a rocket tomorrow. The Artemis, they are launching a rocket to the moon, so they claim. And this is, they say, the first time they've done this now for 50 years. 50 years is a long time. 50 years ago, many people didn't have televisions in their home. And if they did, most of them were still black and white. Let's take a look at this clip and see what these people are banging on about. Nearly 50 years after NASA's last manned mission to the moon, the space agency is gearing up for Monday's historic rocket launch, kicking off its new moon mission, Artemis One. CBS's Mark Strassman has more tonight from the Kennedy Space Center near Cape Canaveral, Florida. Well, first off, look at the state of this red, blue, the colors of your fake left-right democratic illusion. Looks like your fake GB News, UK's version of Fox News. This presenter's even got a red and blue tie. These presenters and their shows have reached the highest of heights of falseness. Off the radar, plastic look. It's a great sight seeing that Artemis vehicle on the pad. By the hour, Monday morning grows bigger, like a waxing moon for Charlie Blackwell Thompson and everyone at NASA. Can you give me an update on the weather, please? Artemis One's launch director will give the go for liftoff. We have done a tremendous amount of testing here on the ground, and now it's time for the flight test. Okay, so the first thing to note here is, of course, there are many, many people out there who believe that the moon landings back 50 years ago didn't really happen, that it was staged. And here we have 50 years later, all of the technological advancements, which we can visibly see in our everyday lives that have occurred, right? And yet NASA haven't really advanced at all. 50 years have gone by, and yet they're, they're not even confident enough to put astronauts in the rocket or land it on the moon. 50 years has gone by and the best they can do is an unmanned flight. Come on, you're having a laugh. After launch, Artemis will rocket its crewless Orion capsule within 60 miles of the moon's surface. It will loop into a distant lunar orbit, reaching roughly 40,000 miles beyond the moon, the deepest space ever for a capsule that could carry humans. 42 days after liftoff, Orion will splash down in the Pacific Ocean. Notice it states NASA animation in the left-hand top corner. Most of the clips you see from NASA in news segments are all animated. They CGI, you know, they've been working with Disney and Hollywood since the 1950s. They recently worked with Pixar and Disney on their latest Buzz Lightyear movie. That's one small step for man. One Think of Artemis as Apollo on steroids. Artemis 2, scheduled for 2024, will be a crude flyby of the moon. Artemis 3, sometime later this decade, the first moon landing in more than a half century. These images are not real. Why? Why are they not real? Why do they not have footage in all the 50 years that have gone by? Why have they not got something real? That's an animated astronaut, an animated CGI astronaut holding a CGI animated rock. It's not real. A bit like one of those rocks that ended up in museums, like this one, the prized possession of a Dutch museum, apparently brought back by US astronauts from the moon, but it turned out to be petrified wood. It wasn't real. How did that happen, I wonder? We want to ultimately uh, end up on Mars. We want to keep uh, venturing deeper into space. And the moon is a perfect stepping stone. But Artemis costs sky high. Total dollars projected through fiscal year 2025, 93 billion. Okay, so all across the world, we have these countries going on about how they are or could be going into recession or depression. Yet here we have the US spending 93 billion to send a rocket to the moon? Let's just say this is for real, just for argument's sake. What, what are you going there for anyway? 93 billion? Apparently, in the US, food banks are experiencing a massive surge at the moment. And yet here we are spending, or here they are, spending 93 billion to say what, the cow jumped over the moon? I mean, come on. 
Monday's launch alone, more than $4.1 billion for a rocket NASA will use once. A lot of money. Paul Martin is NASA's inspector general, its in-house watchdog. That concerns us enough that in our reports, we said we see that as unsustainable for the Artemis program. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson told us that over time, those costs will come down for a space agency that has promised the moon and starting Monday, hopes to deliver. So now I've seen countless shows, debates about this. There are plenty of good arguments about the moon landings being fake. And you know, you've got these mainstream media pundits who counter them. You've got NASA who have scientists and mathematicians, number crunchers, the best that money can buy, who can answer anything. You've got one side claiming to debunk the other, and I'm not getting into all of that complicated stuff, I'm not a scientist, but just from an objective, logical standpoint, just looking at it simply, this really doesn't add up. You're telling me that 50 years ago, you could land on the moon numerous times, have astronauts jumping around on the moon, having fun, driving moon buggies, playing golf, hitting a golf ball on the moon. And all of this is being filmed while doing it and you're getting that footage back. They claim to be able to do this 50 years ago, but now 50 years later, all of those technological advancements that we can all see that have happened around us and they launch a rocket, but they can't land it and they don't want to put astronauts in the rocket. They're putting mannequins in the rocket, <laughs> right? All around us, we see all of this technological advancement. We can see it with our own eyes, 50 years, and yet NASA haven't advanced at all. In fact, they've gone backwards. And what is their excuse? This clip here that NASA lost the data of the original moon landings. Check this out. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and it's a painful process to build it back again. Yeah, yeah, they, they just lost, destroyed all the technology and lost the data. This sounds like, oh, oh my dog, he, he ate my homework. They said 50 years ago that landing on the moon was the greatest achievement of man. And yet you destroyed the technology? You lost the data? Come on, are you serious? I mean, this, this is not the first time here we see moon landing tapes got erased back in 2009. These NASA people are reckless with their stuff, aren't they? Reckless deleting, destroying data and footage that took decades apparently to earn through hard work. So reckless so they are. Luckily enough, this gave them the excuse to do a complete digital makeover of the live footage or whatever. Who knows where they're going with that story. And this seems to happen to NASA frequently losing stuff. Here's another clip. In just a few months, NASA's space shuttle program will take its last flight, but the ABC Action News IT team uncovered a problem at NASA happening on the ground. Investigator Michael George explains tonight. Eight, seven, six. They can put a man on the moon. One. Booster ignition. But they can't keep track of the equipment they use to do it. That's according to NASA reports obtained by the I team. Kennedy Space Center employees report just last year nearly half a million dollars of high-tech items simply vanished. Something's broke in the system. Suzanne Padone works for Inventory Management Solutions. Companies hire her to keep track of their inventory and make sure nothing falls through the cracks. We showed her what we found at NASA. It appears that there isn't really a process working year after year and it's probably going to continually get worse yeah this is a story that happens a lot with nasa oh we lost it oh we destroyed it oh some someone's taped over it check out this article here nasa's latest moon mission is the dawn of a new space age really well it sounds like you're going backwards to me it says here there won't be any humans on nasa's big trip but they will use free high-tech mannequins that's the term for human models used in scientific research. They will be filled with sensors that will test how the body, the human body responds to space travel. Okay, 50 years ago, you had men on the moon playing golf, driving buggies. Did you not do tests on them back then? No? Oh, that's right, you destroyed all the data. Yeah, come on. 
Then we've got the numbers involved. It says here the journey will be 1.3 million miles in total. Okay, so you've got the 13. Then it says here NASA is currently targeting a takeoff window between 8.33 and 10.33. Why do they pick that particular number of minutes? Why 8.33 and 10.33? Why not just 8.30? Why 33? As you know, we've talked about this before, the use of certain numbers in articles and 33 is a number that turns up a hell of a lot. In stories, that looks suspicious. You know, they were 33 years old. It was at 33 Street Address. Or with the Georgia Guidestones recently, it, was, it went bang at 333, etc. Here we go again. Look, people will debate this until they are blue in the face. Okay, and it can all get very, very complicated. I like to look at these things simply. Maybe I'm a simpleton. They claim to land on the moon numerous times. 50 years ago, astronauts could play golf on the moon. They could drive moon buggies back and forth to the moon numerous times. Yet 50 years later, all of the technological advancements, and yet they are too scared to put anyone in the rocket 50 years later. They say they couldn't do it for 50 years because they destroyed the data. They lost the original footage. How can an ordinary person not think, hang on, you know, this doesn't add up. This doesn't really make sense. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments. Now, I know people will be saying uh, flat earth, flat earth this, flat earth that in the comments. Is Hugo a flat earther? Again, I've seen the videos about all of this. I've seen all of the debates. It's all very interesting and it's all very, very complicated. I mean, it can make your head spin. There is a lot of bias. I see a lot of shields on both sides, which is interesting. So there is a lot of sensitivity to this subject. Look, I don't know the answer, but I know what I feel. I don't trust these people, these NASA people. I don't believe a word they say, especially when it's, you know, plastered all over the fake stream media in a favorable way without anybody questioning it. But again, I can only believe, I can only believe what I see with my own eyes. Now, when I come out of my front door in the morning and I look around me, the earth, it looks flat, okay? If you want me to say the earth is round, then you're gonna to have to take me up high in the sky and show me this curvature so I can see it for myself or better still higher so I can see the globe. Okay, otherwise, what you're expecting me to do is to take the word of other people. You're expecting me to believe in something without actually seeing it with my own eyes. I don't believe or trust these control freaks, so I can only go by what I see. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to HugoTalks.com and I'll see you later.